Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly look forward to spending this time with you. If you have a question or a comment, send us an email to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today we have back with us Monsignor Frank Bonano. He, today we're going to be discussing his very active ministry of almost 60 years, as well as a recent book called Three Minutes with God, Reflections and Prayers to Encourage, Inspire, and Motivate. And this beautiful book is available at EWTNRC.com. Go out to the website, Three Minutes with God. Com. Maybe there's somebody in your life and your family and they're not where you are with God. And this might be a good starting point, yeah. right? And so you just want to, this would be a great book to purchase. Maybe you got a birthday or anniversary coming up <laughs> and say, you know, just get started. Start three minutes with God and just see what happens. Yeah. Well, in one sense, three minutes or a minute, well, how much is there really there? but it is so meaty mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful. And we do take time to pray. So we're not just beginners with doing three minutes, but I'd recommend this book, whether you pray for an hour a day, you should still read this book because there's so many different facets and virtues and situations and circumstances and in here illustrations and the teachings of scripture. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful for every area. Mm -hmm. One of his key areas that he likes to share about is divine providence mm -hmm. and what divine providence is and how in the midst of, especially times of suffering, that if you just be attentive to God in the little things that he places in your life, you begin to have faith for the bigger things and things that you don't understand, the sufferings that you're having. Because you, you speak about God's sticky notes. Yes, love notes. And that's what he mm -hmm. speaks about. He doesn't say sticky notes, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's just those sticky notes like you do that for me too. Mm -hmm. So in my drawers, I love you. Right. Or there's a kiss or there's right. whatever. And he says, you know, that's providence. You just see God's working mm -hmm. in your life and you can believe him for the bigger things. That's just one area out of 150 short, pithy, to the point, profound sayings that uh, Monsignor shares with us. Yes, and we're going to have a great show. And I hope you got to watch yesterday because today, hold on to your seats because Monsignor is going to have more great things to share with us. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today we're excited to have again with us Monsignor Frank Bugnano, and we're going to be discussing his beautiful active ministry of almost 60 years as well, if he didn't have enough to do. He wrote a book called Three Minutes with God, Reflections and Prayers to Encourage, Inspire, and Motivate. I don't know about you, but I need all of those three <laughs> virtues happening in my life. I need to be inspired, I need to be motivated, and I need to be reflective as to think, God, what are we doing? What, what's new today? And wake up with God to do something for God. Go out to the website, threeminuteswithgod.com. Wow. Well, look <laughs> at you, Monsignor. We're Thank so you. excited to have you. Now, yesterday, we yeah. were talking about mm -hmm. you have a daily television show. Yes. So we want you to tell our family how that came about and, and what do you do on that television show. How does show? it relate to the book? Yeah. Again. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm a huge believer in the providence of God. Very few things in my life have I ever planned. They, they come my way. Seriously, they come mm -hmm. my way. Uh, okay, so I got on TV. <laughs> How did the TV thing happen? Well, a woman who joined the church when I was at St. Augustine, uh, wonderful, she was Jewish, became Catholic, but a wonderful woman. When she went to work with a TV uh, station in Des Moines, called me and said, we want to give one minute to a religion, and I want you to have it. I said, I'll take it. So anyway, so I, we'll call it thought of the day. So I did those. We did, and we did wound up doing uh, 200 and 60, 
280 of them now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Um, so then I have a niece who works for Franciscan Media. I'm with her and her mom, my sister. Yeah. And we're chatting someday. Yeah, but I said, what do you do? She, I work for Franciscan Media. I said, who? Franciscan Media. Do you guys print books? She said, well, yeah, so we do. I said, you know, we've done so many of these, these TV things. What if we took all the scripts? They're sitting on a shelf somewhere at WHO television. Let's take them off the shelf and make them into a book. She said, I love it. Mm. So that started it. That it. So we, we gave them to the editors there. They took them. They put them into three categories. And, yeah. and uh, they said, so we decided to put a, 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 a quote of scripture at the top end of each one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then a prayer at the bottom. I'll tell you why. Are you interested? Yes. I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because what is prayer? Well, uh, Saint, uh, oh gosh, uh, oh gosh, what, uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a second. Uh, it wasn't Thomas Aquinas said, look, prayer is a loving conversation with the one who you know loves me. Mm. I will have a loving conversation with someone who loves me. Mm. So what's goes back and forth. So first thing in prayer is, who's talking? God, gotcha. So I read here, something from Proverbs, or, you know, mm -hmm. scripture, okay. Now I say, well, that's, not, that's just a little dinky sentence. No, no, don't count, don't discount that. Mm -hmm. Remember what converted St. Augustine. Ooh, I, I won't go into that, we don't have enough time, but he, he was a wild man. He had two mistresses, the whole thing, and picked up, one day he heard, some singing. Had a good mother though. Monica. Oh, Monica, she, she, so he said, this, he said, I thought I heard a choir singing, totally at lege, totally, Latin means take and read. And I looked around and there's a Bible. And I thought, as soon as I open this up, God will talk to me. This guy was horrible, sinner. He opened it up to Romans 13, 13, you know, so, and it all said is, let us stop behaving as in, in, in excess, yeah. sexual excess, drunkenness, but rather in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I read no further, nor had I any yeah. need to read mm. any further. Put it down, went and saw his mother, Monica. She saw Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan. He took instructions, baptized him, that was it. One, one passage, Romans 13, 13. Mm -hmm. So that's why this little teeny weeny <coughs> scripture at the top, don't discount it. Right. Yes. Because it's the living word of God. You doggone right mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you read the meditation, which is what the thing that I put together. Yeah. Then at the bottom, it's your turn to talk. Okay. Prayer at the bottom mm -hmm. of each one. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a prayer thing. Yes. That's what it is. Well, it's beautiful because for those maybe, like Jim said, we have a very beautiful prayer life. And, um, but it's, it's, you, it, this can come up alongside of it, enrich it more for people who maybe, who don't know how to pray, don't, aren't open to scripture. You could give this to maybe someone who's on a journey, but that right now they look like they're far from God. And this just might be the very thing that God uses to pry open their hearts. Every night I kneel down and pray to the Holy Spirit. Anybody reading this, mm. God, the Holy Spirit is so big. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is nothing for you. Come down and touch everybody, not only who's reading that, but also who's watching my TV deal, yeah. the, the verbal part of it. Mm -hmm. Touch them, Holy Spirit, please. And I've had people walk up to me and say, you know what I did, what? I was having such a bad day, I just cracked it open. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I like when you introduced the book, you said, uh, you could start any way you want. You can read any one you want. That's right. This isn't, you got to read this one this day and the next day and so on. And it just really freed me up. And so sometimes you can just look at the titles of things and say, well, I just want to read that. That just draws me to it. And it's the kind of book, again, you know, I, I know it's really reaching out to people to do something daily. But for me, it's going to be like, well, it doesn't necessarily, I'm doing my daily devotion. I just want to read this any time mm -hmm. because this, yeah, is, this right. is good. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a good illustration. It's a good teaching. And it seems like, I've read a good number of them. You're a big Francis de Sales guy. Oh, yeah. You're a big Martin Luther King Jr. guy. Yeah, a lot of Martin Luther King Jr. stuff mm -hmm. uh, in there. Uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mother Teresa. Yeah. Why de Sales? What, oh, what? de Sales is amazing. He wrote for lay people. He was the first saint, he was, you know, whatever, bishop. He ran into some lay people. He tells a story that he was shocked 
because they were close to Jesus. He said, wait a minute, I thought just priests and nuns were, he realized that lay people were just as full of holiness as priests and nuns. So he started to write for lay people. And that's why it's so easy to understand Francis de Sales. And I, I read him all the time. He's so wonderful. Yes. You have uh, one of your uh, teachings here, Do Not Worry. And then you quote de Sales. You say, St. Francis de Sales counseled, Do not look forward to what may happen tomorrow. The same everlasting Father who cared for you today will care for you tomorrow and every day. Either he will shield you from suffering or he will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace then. Put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations and say continually, the Lord is my strength mm -hmm. and my shield. My heart has trusted in him. I am being helped. He is not only with me, but in me, and I am in him. See that? And you got these nuggets all mm -hmm. over the place. Yeah. Something that I'm... Don't, I'm not aware of from St. Francis de Sales, and you know, why are you interested in him? Now I know why you're interested in him. And this is a principle that runs through your book in numerous ways in terms of God's providence and not to worry. You're very much, whether you practice it, I think you do practice it, but it's like you got to deal with the present, mm -hmm. this moment. You know, we look forward to the future. If you, if you just do moment by moment oh, by right. moment, things mm -hmm. begin to fall into place. So, you know, yesterday is gone. You know, we're not even promised tomorrow. Right. But just be with the Lord in the moment. And you give that counsel in various ways through various people. And it's like, if you do this, it's all going to fall in place. But you're trying to put things in place that haven't even happened yet. And, and you're getting anxious about things. So you're really big on being in the moment. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> of course, the sales got so I literally, I read something of his every day. Day. In fact, with me when I came here, I brought my little book <laughs> mm -hmm. of the sales because yeah. I read something. I tried to read something every day. Yeah. Even if it's the same thing like that that yes. you just read, yes. I've read that over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. It's fresh all the time. Well, you know, we didn't say any of this y yesterday, right? But you had some real problems with your travel, oh. and we didn't know what was going on. You got here instead of a day before, you got here minutes before, really, <laughs> the show began. And you had called me on the phone and saying, you know, I'm having difficulties. I left a message on your phone, and I said, oh, well, Monsignor, great man of divine providence and all teachings <laughs> on hope, don't worry about anything. Believe in providence, <laughs> right. believe in hope. Yeah, I'm, I, tell, I talk about it and I worry about it, yeah. <laughs> right, but then, but that's the beautiful thing is that yeah. God puts us in situations that are totally out of our control. That is very true. You are not in charge of planes getting here on time and out of time and the weather. We're just not in charge of things. And it is, it's living in the moment because that's when we can experience God. Yes. And if we're, we're constantly in tomorrow, well, tomorrow hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And I don't have grace for tomorrow. Right. I only have grace for today. Right. And so we have to stay in the present. Now, one of the things that you did was uh, you're a good joke teller. <laughs> how, did, how did that go in parish life? Uh, well, I have this, this horrible reputation that after, after every, I, I, pr I do a mass in Indianola, Iowa every Sunday at 9, 10, 15. And I've done this for, I always, tell a joke at the end of mass. Now, maybe you're not supposed to do that. I don't know. But <laughs> but if I don't, they go, joke, joke. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. They want to hear it. So I have I have 42 punchlines, and all I do is I read the punchline, I go, oh, I know that joke. Uh -huh. So, anyway, I do that. And it triggers your memory, and you're able to tell the yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> is helpful, because at the, I, I, you told a joke that I was able then to tell my grandchildren. You saw you on video telling a yeah, joke. Yeah, I saw you on video, you were telling a joke. I was like, that is a great joke. What, what was the gist of it? It was the joke of this guy whose name was Odd. <laughs> yeah. And then Jeez. all his life he hated being Odd, right? <laughs> so when he died, he decided that when he wasn't going to put anything on his, um, you headstone. know, headstone. Yeah. Yeah. And so people would walk to the cemetery and they would say, that's odd. He never, yeah, he, he didn't nothing. like his name, didn't want to be called odd. And for the rest of his yeah, and rest. He did not want odd on eternity. his gravestone, no. Right, but everybody right. said that. But people walk by and go, isn't that odd? Yeah, see, <laughs> how perfect. Well, maybe you could speak to us about the importance of a sense of humor, right? Isn't that important? And oh, I, Joy's always like, you know, Jim, you got a lot. You know, she's always filled with joy and that. 
And sometimes we just take ourselves too seriously. You know, uh -huh. I take myself too seriously. I want to be a perfectionistic, you know. Oh, it's just sure. like you got to laugh at yourself. Uh huh. It, it's. I think it'd be difficult if you. I don't know why. How you develop a, a sense of humor? It's just. I'm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but every single day, as you've learned in the ministry, yeah. there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of heartache. Um, That's there's, true. There's, you see a lot, you hear a lot, you see the disappointment of parents and families of children and falling away and divorce and all the hardships of, of being a priest, of bearing God's heart among the sheep, right? But in the midst of it, that you could come through after all these years of 60 years of ministry and live and love to tell about it and still go on and have joy in your soul. That's a beautiful witness of what God has done mm -hmm. to you, Monsignor Frank. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is, it's beautiful. Where, where does your joy come from? Why are you joyful? Why do you experience the degree of peace that you do? I would say just realizing the presence of Jesus and God in everything, just realizing his presence. You know, what's there not to be joyful for when he's standing right in front of you. Mm. I mean, I, I, don't know, I don't know if we're even saying that right, but yes. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, it is beautiful. Well, you're a beautiful witness because the light of Christ is shining through you. Yes. I mean, it really is. It's so beautiful oh. and it blesses my heart. We have a minute <laughs> and 30 seconds. Just share whatever you want to share to the EW10 family right now. Okay, I, I have a, one of my favorite saints, Edith Stein. Mm. Jewish woman, okay, became a Car Carmelite nun, executed at, at, at Auschwitz. St. Edith Stein, love it, he ha she's hero. I have an ever deeper and firmer belief that nothing is merely an accident when seen in the light of God, that my whole life, down to the smallest details, has been marked out for me in the plan of divine providence mm. and has a completely coherent meaning in God's all-seeing eyes. Mm. Mm. Does that happen to be in the book or is that beyond the book? Anyway, that's beautiful what you just Yeah, I don't shared. know. It's, I, I, it's probably in the book someplace, yeah. <laughs> Monsignor, it's been wonderful to have you back you. in 1981 through 1990 doing EWTN. You're yeah. back again here with us. You are a blessing, and I know our people are so connecting with you, and we must have you back mm. soon. Thank you, Father. Sure, Thank you. you bet. Three Minutes with God, reflections and prayers to encourage, inspire, and motivate EWTNRC.com. Mm. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, Father, another beautiful day with Monsignor Frank. What was your takeaway from it? Well, I think out of every guest has ever been on At Home with Jim and Joy, mm -hmm. you can put a trophy up on the wall because he's at most at home. <laughs> I mean, he was <laughs> just kicking back here. And I've never seen somebody just, you know, kick back and act like they're at home on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. That's a compliment. That was, yeah, it's really great. He was easy. Yeah. Very easy and yeah, just delightful. easy to talk to and you know, that, four shows. Yeah. If you go through his teachings, yeah. he talks a lot about listening. Mm. So I think he knows in part exactly what he's doing and how people want to be listened to. How you shouldn't be thinking about everything you're going to be saying. But the more you're listening and people connect with that, the more the relationship. And there's not there's a lot of people who teach and who preach and who do whatever, the very few that listen, and listen mm. is love. And he takes you through several keys to be a good listener and why you should do that and what it means to the person and to the Lord. Father Angelus used to tell us that 75% of any good conversation is listening. Mm. Yeah. Just listening. 75% of any good conversation is listening. And I mean, I've had to learn to listen throughout the years. I think I grew up in a family that we all kind of talked over one another. 
back and forth, back and forth. And one time I was on the phone with my mom and we're always, growing up, I used, I come from a family that we, one person would talk over the other and nobody really would get across what they wanted to say. And I kind of called my mom out on it. I said, mom, this is what we do as a family. Yeah. We talk over one another. And like about a month later, I was talking to her on the phone and I was like, are you there, mom? Is anybody there? Did we get disconnected? And she said, no, I'm finally starting to listen after mm. all these years. Mm. It goes to show that we can change. We can learn, you know, by God's grace and God's help and his assistance to learn how to listen. I think in confession, I know Monsignor will probably say this too, but we learn how, we learn how to communicate really in confession. You know, after hearing confessions, I've been a priest for only 11 years compared to his 60 plus. But in confession, that's where we learn how to listen, how to be attentive to, to the Holy Spirit, and also to listen to the penitent on the other side. Um, I was in a conference one time with Cardinal Robert Serra, and he talked to us about how the priest lends his ear to Jesus. That's that there's great. an active listening like in the priest, yeah. that Christ, not so much the, the priest is listening, but Christ is listening to mm -hmm. in the sacrament of penance. So I think that's helpful too, that when we go to confession, that we are actually putting our, our sins, our weaknesses into the ear, not just a, you know, a priest, a human being, but also the priest who's in, that, the, I should say the capital P priest, Christ. Because mm -hmm. really there's only one priest. There's only one mediator between God and men. And each of us priests, Monsignor, myself, we participate in Christ's priesthood. Yes. We lend our ear to Christ. We lend our hands to Christ. Mm -hmm. We lend our mouth to Christ when we say the words of consecration. Well, that's unique to you as a priest, but I am definitely going to use that. That's mm -hmm. profound. I want to be able to say to God, I give you my ear. Mm -hmm. Sanctify my ear so that I could hear you and hear you for others. Mm -hmm. Father, close us in, in a prayer and with a blessing, please. Sure. Family at home, we pray that the Lord may see you and know you and reach you wherever you may be. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you, show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Thank you. Father. Remember that you're an important part of this EW10 family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.